Welcome to the tutorial about elements and compounds one. We are going to cover ionic compounds today. So you will need to get your periodic table and have it at hand. If you don't have a periodic table, it should be inside your book or you can go into the internet and print one for you. Each time that we have a tutorial, you have to have it with you. First, we are going to see why the elements combine. And the elements combine because they are not stable the way they are or the way they appear in the periodic table because they don't have an octet complete or the configuration of the noble gas near to them. So they are going to try to achieve these. How they are going to do this? Well, metals are going to release electrons in their last level since they have eight electrons in the inner level, two in the sublevel S and six in the sublevel P. And um, remember that we don't count the electrons in D or F because they are inside, far further inside the atom. So uh, they want to release these electrons to get the configuration of the noble gas near to them. In the case of the nonmetals, they will take the missing electrons to complete the octet. And this happens any time that they combine with metals. But when they combine with nonmetals, they do not want to give away the electrons, so they are going to share electrons with another nonmetal. But uh, in this case, we are going to see how metals release and nonmetals take electrons since we are talking about ionic compounds. The covalent compounds are going to be covered in the next tutorial. Remember also that all compounds are neutral. So the amount of electrons inter interchange or share in the case of the uh, covalent compounds must be the same. We are going to see how we work this out. Now, how do they combine? Well, let's say that we have a chlorine atom. The chlorine has seven electrons in the last level. So it needs only one to complete the octet. So it's going to take that electron and form what we call chloride ion. The negative charge corresponds to the electron extra that the chlorine uh, took. And the chlorine name changes to chloride because we are talking about a negative ion. In the case of the sodium atom, he has uh, one electron in the last level only, so it's going to give away that electron. So the charge will be positive because it's going to have one uh, proton in the nucleus that is not neutralized by that missing electron. Let's say that we have an element that uh, has a different amount of electrons in the last level, like sulfur. Sulfur needs two electrons to complete the octet. So it's going to take those electrons to form the sulfide ion. Again, ch the charge corresponds to the two electrons taken. So it's going to be negative two. And the name changes to sulfide. Uh, the last uh, example that we have is the aluminum atom that has three electrons in the last level. If you look at the periodic table, you are going to see that the amount in the last level um, the amount of electrons in the last level corresponds to the group number. Um, so the aluminum is going to uh, release those three electrons to form an aluminum ion positive three. Now, things to remember. If they gain electrons, they become negative ions. If they lose electrons, they become positive ions. The charge corresponds to the amount of electrons lost or gained. That charge is going to be also named as the uh, oxidation state or number. Only the negative ions change the name to uh, the ending "-ide", or the suffix "-ide", instead of the uh, regular name. The positive ions do not change the name. The amount of electrons lost or gained are also called the oxidation number or oxidation state that is going to help us to build the uh, compounds. Okay, now ionic bonding. When we have the chloride ion and it's negative, it's going to combine with sodium ion to form what we call sodium chloride. Notice that we have only one charge, negative and positive, so we can form the um, compound just co with one sodium and one chloride since 
uh, they need to be the exact amount of charges. This is easy for you to understand because we have one and one. But when the uh, ions positive and negative they have different amount of charges is a little bit more difficult. So we need to work out some somehow to form the compound. The compound is going to be easily formed if we interchange the charges, meaning we are going to have three times uh, the sulfide ion, and that is specified in the formula of aluminum sulfide, and uh, aluminum is going to be uh, two times, so we are going to have aluminum sulfide. Now, notice that in the formulas that I wrote, this the metal is always written first, and the non-metal with the ending ide is going to be written at last. Now, we have the oxide ion, for example, and the calcium ion. In this case, when we Intercharge the or interchange, better say the charges or the oxidation numbers. We are going to have two and two. In this case, we can simplify to obtain calcium oxide. I hope you like it. Have a good day.